Hello, my darlings, and welcome to Who is Mike? This is a short visual novel. Um, I don't know how short. And I don't really know the subject matter either. The screenshots that I saw just looked very creepy fantastic. So I figured that looks like it's up our alley, right? Do you want to find out who is Mike? Are we Mike? Is she Mike? Let's find out. Ugh, my head. My nape throbbed with a sudden, persistent pain. Dizziness came and went like a slow trickle of sweat. What? It was evening. The curtains were closed, and the sound of blood thumping in my ears made the silence malignant. I was in my house, yes, but I was disoriented. Something felt amiss. There was a certain creepiness that made the hairs on my arms prickle. I blinked at my surroundings, my glasses. Where are they? Did I bump into something, or...? Stay back, whatever you are! Even before I heard his voice, I felt the presence of someone else in the room. It justified the awful feeling in my gut. Just don't move! Oh my god, there was... a stranger in my house! He held a bat with his outstretched arms, maintaining the distance between us. G get back! I didn't know what to do. I opened my mouth in several attempts to say something. Don't hurt me? Please leave? What do you want? In the end, I just stood there in dumb silence, stewing in my own nervous sweat. What is he even doing here? If he was a robber, he picked the wrong house. Do I... know him from somewhere? I squinted at his blurred shape, trying to replace the man's fuzzy edges with something more tangible. He looks... I stepped closer. The man waved the bat in alarm. I, I told you not to move! Ugh! Did he just shiver? He's acting way more upset than me, considering he's the intruder in my house. It might be a foolish thing to say, but he didn't seem dangerous at all. Just go away, please. Please. He continued mumbling to himself, gasping big gulps of panicked breaths. Uh-oh. Hey, I, I think you're having a panic attack. Try breathing through your nose and out your mouth. Damn. Did I actually just give breathing exercises to a trespasser? I guess Sarah was right. My kindness will be the death of me one day. In any case, the stranger relaxed a good deal. I gave him a small, unsure smile. Y you alright? What? What are you? Uh, sorry? My name is Make Jansen. You're in my house. Who are you? Never mind. I think I lost my glasses somewhere. If you let me find them, I'm sure we can sort this out. You don't seem like a bad guy. The man dropped the bat to his side and let out a long, forlorn sigh. Under the coffee table, probably. Thanks. I fumbled around the floor, praying for dear life the stranger wouldn't attack me while I was vulnerable. But he just stood there, shuffling his feet and mumbling to himself. He wasn't very threatening, really. I'm sure the poor guy's just confused. Also, there was something familiar about him. Something I couldn't quite put my finger on. It might be his posture. Or even that red sweater he's wearing. I could swear it looks exactly like mine. I'm sorry for threatening you with a bat. Uh, it's alright. If it makes any difference, I wasn't really going to hit you. The shape of my glasses finally registered in my hand and I fished them out. I don't really think I can hurt anyone, even in this situation. Sarah's always said... The world gained clarity as I put the pair of glasses over my eyes. Someday kindness is going to kill me. So, uh, you can see me now. Hi. The man waved lamely. I stood there with my jaw agape, staring at him. He was me, existing as a separate being. He had my face, my hair, my posture, my sweater. No wonder that sweater looked like mine. It was mine. This is... just a dream. It's just a dream. That's it. Calm down. Don't lose your head. Just relax. No matter how many times I said it, though, the gravity of the situation refused to stick. The room felt simultaneously constricting and vast, like being squeezed and let go again and again. I felt like I was a child again, lost in a crowd, blindly reaching for my mother's hand. 
only to realize in horror that the hand belonged to a stranger. Ah! Uh, okay. Now it's your turn not to panic, right? Deep breaths. Is he some kind of clone? An apparition of my future? What? What? What exactly is he? I reached out to touch him, wanting to make sure he was real and not some figment of my imagination. The other Mike recoiled from my touch and pushed my arm away. Hey now, this is weird for both of us. Don't make it worse by being grabby. He looks solid, so he can't be a ghost. We can form separate thoughts from my own. He seems aware that we're the same person. What are you? Why do you have my face? Excuse me? Your face? For your information, I was having a normal night in my house when you came barging in here. So why don't you tell me what you're doing in my living room? I opened my mouth to argue, but once I did, I realized I couldn't remember anything. My last bits of memory consisted of a bowl of chips and late night TV shows. Also a pain at the back of my head. I... can't remember. Aha! See? That's what all fakes say! Case closed! Fake? Excuse me? You're some sort of anomaly. It's the only explanation. I don't remember doing anything special recently. If you have my memories, I'm sure you'll agree. You, on the other hand, lost a chunk of time from yours, so you're either the cause of everything or you're simply an effect. Ergo, an anomaly. Right. Then, if we're going there, I might as well say you're lying about the state of your memories. Normality was disrupted with your presence, hence I lost that track of time. The probability that you are the cause and effect of my sudden amnesia is very high. Therefore, you're the fake. You can't prove that. Neither can you disprove it, since we have the same arguments. And go around in circles, see what you're getting at. It is interesting, though. Isn't it? Well, sorta. After all, it's not every day you meet an exact replica of yourself. Make it sound like I'm the copy here. Well, aren't you? Don't start with that thing again. This is such a pain in the ass. Don't I know it. What could have caused this? What kind of freak of nature would have sprouted another me? I'm sure I should be flattered or something, but I'm hardly clonable specimen material. <sighs> At the very least, he doesn't seem... dangerous. There's no animosity or aggression coming from him. I didn't feel any ill will toward him either. But it was strange how we have the same small scar on the chin. Even the same pockmarks from teenage acne. I touched my own face on a sudden impulse. I'm still me. Right? Just then we heard a door softly opening from upstairs. Oh no, Sarah! Sarah! I knew Sarah heard that noise a while ago. Quick, find somewhere to hide. I'll try to distract Sarah while you crawl out the front door. What? Wait a minute. You're getting rid of me. No, I'm not, okay? We just can't risk having two mics in the house, you know that. Well, then why don't you leave? Are you kidding? You look like a train wreck. He was right. I was filthy. How did that happen? Look, we'll get it all sorted out tomorrow. Who knows, maybe your missing memories might even come back. But you're throwing me out of my house. I'm not throwing you out. It's just a temporary arrangement. Let me deal with Sarah tonight. Tomorrow we'll sort out this mess. Just leave for now, okay? Ah! Oh. Fine, I'll go. All right, I'll stay out of this tonight. It was difficult, but I managed to quell my emotions and get it under control. I knew I wouldn't be able to accomplish anything without a clear head. I'll deal with Sarah for tonight, okay? Maybe I can ease her into the situation. You'll be fine. It'll be better tomorrow. Quick! She's coming downstairs. Before I knew it, my other self ushered me out the door and slammed it behind me. I could still hear Sarah's voice in the other room inquiring what I'd been up to. My heart ached to go back there and tell her everything. But I... I chose not to. Maybe I was too scared to face her like this. Somehow it all felt like it was my fault. I'm such a coward. Well, enough of that. I'll deal with it tomorrow. I need time to think. Gather my thoughts. Make sense of this situation. Maybe he's right. Those couple of hours that my memory missed might hold the key to unlocking the mystery. I walked on toward the town, thinking of a way around this mess. 
As I passed by a store window, I noticed my reflection. It's strange. Is it just me, or do I suddenly look thinner? Ugh. A sharp pain squeezed my heart as the thought crossed my mind. I struggled to breathe. My chest heaved in erratic rhythms. My heart... Ugh! What's happening to me? Blood dripped from my nose. It was then I realized I didn't have a lot of time left. I'm... dying. And I didn't know why. Sarah! The corners of my vision started to darken like a curtain falling on a play. What? Alright. Obviously, need to stay in that house. Okay. We got this, guys. We got this. We'll go to that first choice we get to make. And then, uh, we'll save it. That way we won't have to do this again. There's nine different endings? Interesting. Click, 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 Uh, we'll go with what I said last time, sorta. Save. Boop. There we go. Alright. Staying here. I stand there with a heavy feeling in my stomach. His suggestion made sense, but my feet refused to move. Why should I hide? Why should I scurry away from my girlfriend, in my house? It wasn't right. Faint trickles of anger scratched at my chest. No way. What? I'm not leaving. Oh, come on, man. Don't be difficult. If Sarah sees this, this... It won't end well for either of us. If there's anyone out there who can help us, it's... Mikey, it's getting late. Aren't you coming up? Her voice called from the stairs. The living room was dark. She probably didn't see us in the dim light. We held our breaths tight in our throats. Uh, I, I got distracted. Sarah walked toward us, a nonchalant look on her face. Hey, is someone there with you? It's pretty late for visitors. Uh, is that your brother? Mike stole a glance at me. Listen, Sarah, please don't panic. Uh, oh, oh my... God! Sarah, calm down. This is... What the fuck? Okay, I know this looks sort of bad, but... Sort of bad? Mike, I'm staring at two of you! I think we crossed the threshold of sort of bad a long time ago. This... This is a trick, isn't it? With, like, mirrors and shit, or... It's not a prank, Sarah. It's really happening. We don't really know what to do. Uh, stop! Just stop talking. Watching both of you talk at the same time is giving me uh, vertigo. Uh, deep breaths? I... I think I need to lie down. Excuse me for a minute. Well, that went better than I expected. If by that you mean my girlfriend is ready to pop a stress baby, then yeah, sure. I told you this was a bad idea. She'll be fine. She's a police officer. She's used to these kinds of stressful situations, right? I don't think you know what you're talking about. I guess we'd better just deal with it. Okay, boys. I am a lot calmer now. So, first order of business. What the flying fuck? I have no idea. Start at the beginning, then. Well, I heard a noise. I checked it out. I found somebody stumbling around in the living room. I panicked and took the bat. I just wanted to scare off the guy, and then I saw him with my face on. I thought I was losing it, but he was making his way upstairs, so I had to confront him somehow. To be honest, I thought of grabbing a crucifix or something. Cute. I don't remember any of that. I 
just woke up here with an aching head. What's the last thing you do remember? Oh. Tell the truth, I guess. I remember hearing a noise in the kitchen, but I thought it was nothing. I grabbed a beer from the fridge, and then something hit me in the head. And next thing I know, I'm in the living room, and this guy is waving a bat at my face. <laughs> no way. He came in here dragging himself like a drunk, and then he tripped on that stupid carpet. Oh, what if he did, though? You hit me in the head with the bat! I did not! I was too busy freaking out! Don't you blame your clumsiness on me. I already have plenty to spare. I will second that. I guess it's time for that joke to retire. So, I'm getting the feeling there's another issue here. Are you guys trying to outreel each other or what? Well, there can't be two Mike Jansons, can there? Maybe you could help us figure it out. Huh? Decide which one of you is real? Yeah. Like how, exactly? Uh, I don't know. Ask some personal questions or whatever. Hey, yeah, why not? Maybe one of us will slip up. Right. Because you want to treat this thing like a fucking trivia game. Look, guys, I don't think that's gonna work. You can't just decide the realness of somebody in one night of 20 questions. We have to find another way. Like what? Blood samples? DNA test? An exorcism? I don't fucking know. Ah, yes! Oh my god, I guessed that that was going to be the next line. Nailed it. Just please, don't make me choose between the two of you. Sarah, I'm... We're aware this is unfair, but if there's one person who can help us, it's gonna be you. Mikey, you know I love you, right? We've been together a long time. I know your bowel patterns, I know your unhealthy fanboy obsession with Jason Statham. Uh... But I don't think literally anyone is cut out for this shit. Why don't we just call your mom? No! Oh, even your reactions are the same. Impressive. Baby Bunny, please. Please help Papa Bunny out. Stop that! Didn't I tell you that nickname is only between the two of us? Well, technically, it's still just me. Oh my god. That is so fucking creepy. Okay, one thing's for sure, we definitely have to fix this. It's just too damn weird. So will you help us? Sarah sighs and shakes her head. I don't think I get a say either way. At least it's worth a shot. Wait, after this is over, what are we going to do with the imposter? Have you guys thought about that little gem? Uh, well, I'm sure we'll figure something out afterwards. Fake has to leave. Uh, I'll try to be a nice person in this run, just overall. Yeah, let's not rush into that conclusion yet. Let's take it one step at a time. Okay, whatever. Personal questions. All right. Uh... Anniversary? February 26, 2009. Oh, fuck! <laughs> oh, no! Um... Quick save. Uh... Ah! Um... February 26th, Thursday. <laughs> Too easy. Brother's name? Miles Jordan Jansen. He hates it. I'm just gonna go along with all of his answers because look, if we both answer the same thing, then like both of us, if both of us are wrong, what the fuck is she gonna do? Is there another clone? Okay, wait. Miles Jordan Jansen. Exactly why I call him that every chance I get. Right on. You guys are being so mature. Anyways. Favorite animal? I'm starting to sound like the worst dating website in history. Dogs. Yeah! I adore dogs. I should remember to get one after this whole thing is over. <gasps> what if- Oh, but you know, I could just be falling into a trap. Because he could eventually say one thing and then be like, HA! It's not actually dogs, you're copying me! Oh, sure. As long as you remember to water the plants every day. Uh, okay, that's it. I don't think this is working. Hey, wait! Let's take turns. What if he's just leeching off my answers? 
Whoa, I resent that. All right, all right. Here we go. Tell me a secret you haven't told me before. That's why it's a secret. I can't tell you. Honey, is it about my cooking? Oh. Uh. I don't know. Same question. Uh. Sarah, I love you, but. That last tuna casserole you cook sucked like balls. <laughs> Ugh. So it takes a clone of you to pop up before you admit it, huh? But. Next question. Now we're getting somewhere. At least one of you has to be telling the truth. So, Mike, what's wrong with the casserole? <laughs> Tell the truth. Uh, okay. There was way too much chili, first of all. The bottom was on fire for days. It was my bottom. Oh, like my patoot. It was on fire for days. It was horrible. Uh, the texture, too. I don't know. It just felt like eating barf. I mean, it kind of looked like barf, so... And it tasted like pure death. And the smell of the kitchen afterwards? I thought something really did die. Shh, come on, man. Shut up. Shut up. But, I mean, other than that, it was fine. It was great. Plates had a nice floral pattern. Ugh. The plates. Anything else? You were on quite a roll there. Uh, that's... nope, that's it. On the other hand, you make great pizza -lets. I like the macaroni. Uh, yeah, those were good too. The macaroni was a microwave meal. In short, you like none of my cooking, you lying fuck. Oh, that's not... Nice going, Mike. At this point, she'll throw both of us out. Okay, then. More questions. Do you have a crush on our neighbor? Oh, God, this is gonna get so bad. Do you have a crush on our neighbor? What? Who? Paris Beauf Be Beaufort? Beaufort? The model who sunbathes naked on Sundays. What? That's... Sarah, what even are these questions? I'm just making full use of this situation, Mikey. Wouldn't you? Besides, I'm having fun. I'm just gonna... Truth run, truth run. Uh, ask him first. So that's a yes. No. Uh, she's... She's pretty. Okay. I mean, you both are. But you're my soulmate. Huh. She's friendly. I, I've talked to her a few times. She was nice. What? Hmm. I mean, she wasn't intimidating. She didn't try to bite my head off or anything. Oh, sure. And the fact that she flashes her jewels around the neighborhood has nothing to do with her being nice. I didn't even know that. But you should call me next time she does. <laughs> uh, uh. Well, this has been quite educational. Anything else you want to tell me? Paris Buford is dumb as a brick. <laughs> Sorry, but she is. She's a sweet girl, but dude. Poor girl even thinks England is in Africa. Also, if you try sunbathing in a polluted, overpopulated, middle-class residential area with low walls, chances are you're a little soft. <laughs> That's true. Hmm. Anyway, going back to the dilemma at hand. We didn't really make any progress, if you ask me. I still don't know which one of you is which. Why don't we just flip a damn coin? Hey, you know, I'm all for that. I might get lucky. Right. I hardly think that's a good idea. Of course not. But at this point, I'm really at a loss. Sh I like that she's willing to flip a coin to find out who is her real boyfriend? Question mark? I would be losing my shit. Like, there's a person who is either a clone of you, which means there's some crazy sci-fi shit going on right now, or... There's a person pretending to be you, and what if I wind up with the one who isn't the real you? Like, that's messed up. We still have to decide, though. Ah, <sighs> fine. You are the real Mike. What do you suggest we do with the imposter? Well, that's difficult. Uh, if I'm the real Mike, then I should stay Mike, right? The other one has to leave. Go out in the world, find their own identity. The world is big, you know. battle it out yeah I agree but I mean I'm the one who's staying so are you the real Mike 
Yeah, of course I am. Is this one of your weird question things? Just answer. Yes, I'm the real Mike. How about you? Are you the real Mike? I am. Prove it then. Convince me. Uh, okay. It's a bit awkward. But I am Mike Jensen. Heart and mind. It's the only thing I know, really. I wouldn't know what else to say. What? Wait a minute. Like, is one option that we both leave? I don't understand. No, I can't convince you. I can't convince you. There's no way to tell you said so yourself. All I know is I'm Mike. There's nobody else I can be. So what are you going to do if I ever say you're a fake? I don't know. I can't leave. I don't want to. All right, I think I just need to ask one last question. Sarah turned to me. Mike. Yeah? Do you know the date? Uh, June 15th. Actually, it's already June 16th. That means whatever caused all this happened yesterday night. Can you remember anything? Not really. Not even a little bit? I'm sorry, I tried, but the last I can remember is feeling really tired and falling asleep in front of the TV. That's not true. That's not what we said before. We said the last thing that we remembered was getting hit with the bat. That span of time is crucial. It's the missing piece to the mystery. Either that's when you started to exist, or you're not telling us something. Started to exist? Is it just me, or am I getting the feeling that I'm the odd one out? We're just trying to help. You're probably a victim, too. What is this? So both of you agree that I am the fake? When this was arranged? Yeah, you just... you appeared out of thin air, Mike. You're the stranger who barged into our house. Add to that you have no memory of yesterday's events. It just doesn't make sense. You don't make sense. My chest felt heavy at Sarah's words. This can't be happening. Everything's turning against me. Even Sarah. What do you want me to say? I've already told you everything. Yesterday I went to work, I came home, I dozed in front of the TV. I woke up here. I've already said this. Well, how did you get here? Did you walk? Did you take the bus? Did you ride a rainbow unicorn? Facts, Mike. I need to know facts. Guys, just calm down. Seeing the two of you fight is just is really freaky. I really can't remember, okay? If I could, I have no reason to hide it. I've been nothing but honest since I got here. Maybe he has selective amnesia. That's not a reason. It's just an excuse. I know I'm Mike. Please believe me. Well, what if you're a clone and you have no idea? What? A clone? I... You wouldn't know any better. A clone? Is that possible? Am I just disillusioned? Maybe my desire to be Mike fabricated my memories and led me here? Maybe I blocked out the last hours in my mind because I didn't want to know the truth. My head began to throb with frustration. I turned to Sarah. The hope I needed was nowhere in her eyes. Sarah, please. Uh, I'm sorry, it's just... I stood there dumbfounded, a drowning man robbed of his final lifeline. I looked at Sarah and Mike, but they both avoided my eyes. I never felt so alone. Fear surged in my blood, it turned into betrayal and anger. How could Sarah let me down? I need her the most right now. But she won't listen to anything beyond her theories. How right can she be, anyway? It's just a matter of choice and opinion. The truth is as sharp as it is simple. She just chose not to believe. Me. My teeth gritted. I thought I could count on you, Sarah. I thought you wouldn't let me down. Don't say that. You don't know how hard this is for me. Oh yeah, I'm having a ball. Stop villainizing me, Mike. I've done what you've asked. No, you didn't. You jumped to conclusions and you refused to listen to my reasoning. I said one night of trivia questions would- or you said one night of trivia questions wouldn't be enough. But you turn around and just like that you accuse me of hiding something? That's- that's not fair. Fair? Fair? Right. Right, that sounds rich, coming from you. Mike, stop. You're hurting her. I know nothing about this is easy, but I think you have to take a step back. 
We'll help you, okay? But the way things are going, emotions are running really high. We should all take a breather. Why don't you just come by again tomorrow and we'll figure it out? What? You're asking me to leave? No, well, I'll leave too if you want. Shut up, you're just trying to get rid of me again. Uh, oh, I was gonna say, oh my god, what if this game is like, each time you start it over, you're a different clone. <laughs> and it's like, ah, oh, the game knows that we left last time, but right, he tried to get me to leave earlier. I get it. I didn't mean it like that. It's just, I didn't attack. Oh my god. Save. Yes. Okay, no, this is like the nice run, right? It was difficult, but I managed to quell my emotions and get it under control. My face was flushed, my head throbbed, my vision spun. But a few deep breaths in and I began to compose myself. I looked at Mike and Sarah. The atmosphere in the house was tense and palpable. The uneasiness wormed its way into my heart. It's bringing out the worst in me. I can't stay. All right. Yeah, I get it. I'll leave. Sarah's face twitched. There was a ghost of concern on her face. You... you don't really have to. Concern, yes, but there was also a coldness in her eyes that broke my heart. Shallow charity was the most she can give the man with her boyfriend's face. It was that. That distant feeling you have for a tragic accident on the morning paper. I couldn't bear to see her look at me like that. I shook my head. No, I'll leave. There's a motel, a taxi ride away with my name on it. Let me just bum some cash and then I'll be good to go. I gave out a bit of forced laughter to hide the regret in my voice. Now that I've said it, I wish I didn't. Let Sarah insist. Please. Just one more time. Let her say that I can stay one more time. But she didn't. And maybe it was just as well. It's better for all of us. I sighed with finality. Hey, if it'll make any difference, I'll leave too. Maybe it's fairer that way. I offered him a bitter smile. You wouldn't leave Sarah alone after this. I wouldn't leave Sarah alone after this, and neither should you. Just keep an eye on her tonight, okay? Okay. Hey, try to get some rest. It'll get better tomorrow. Thanks. I needed time to think. Gather my thoughts, make sense of this situation. Maybe they're right. Those couple hours that my memory missed might hold the key to unlocking the mystery. Tomorrow I'll find out. Oh no, as I passed by a store window I noticed my reflection. Is it just me or do I look thinner? Aw oh, man. I'm dying. My legs buckled from the pain. Blood dripped from my nose. Something's happening to me. I have to get back. I shouldn't have left. Sarah! But already my vision undulated and knocked me off my feet. Sarah, I need to find somebody to help me. Help me, Sarah. Sarah. Her name appeared in my mind over and over again. I didn't know why, but it was like I wanted to desperately cling to it. I looked around. Where am I? Why can't I remember how I got here? Ugh. My chest. It hurts. Difficult to breathe. Sarah. Sarah. Who... Man. Okay. Load this game. Alright. Attack him. The fear and despair turned into hot, burning anger. How dare this guy suggest that I leave? This asshole who's taking everything that's mine. You have some nerve. Mike! I punched the imposter's face and tackled him to the ground. I pummeled him with every punch I could land. Sarah's screams of warning and anger faded into the background. Everything felt like a million miles away. Even as my fist came into contact with his flesh, I felt strangely distant. Serene. Like I was only a ghost hovering over what was happening. I didn't even notice Sarah's hands pulling me to stop. I simply continued beating him like a frenzied animal. There was a feeling of being controlled. I savored it. I let it. 
but his lower lip split into a large, unsightly gash. Warm blood tainted my fist red, and it was then that I stopped in shock. What am I doing? What am I... When I looked down at him, his mouth twisted into an amused smile. Ah! His eyes glowed with a sinister shade of red. Have you started doubting yourself yet, Mike? I wouldn't be surprised. You were always a little soft, like your punches. He let out a hoarse chuckle. I gripped his throat and brought my fingers heavy on his neck. Bastard, you shut up or I'll kill you. His words came out in short, dry bursts, like tiny firecrackers sizzling out the last of their wick. Hmm, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Haven't you fantasized about this? What is it like to kill? To have that power? Now you're doing it. Congrats. Shut up. Are you aroused right now? Does your weenie feel good? Fuck you! Before I knew it, my hands grabbed the nearby bat with all intention of bringing it down on his... on my face. You c Sarah, help me- Ugh! Mike! His expression changed from evil to helpless in a split second. Pain ripped through my body as the bullet pierced my skin. I looked back and saw Sarah. My beautiful Sarah. Had her gun all along, I should have known. She had tears in her eyes. Sarah, it's not your fault. I wish to say that I didn't mean those awful things I said, but when I opened my mouth, a soft, wet trail of blood blocked my breath. Drowning. Feels like... Drowning. Mike? Run, Sarah. Pain flooded my body as every last bit of me struggled for air. No, it can't. I thrashed and struggled. I looked at Sarah while I still could, and I was struck by an unbearable feeling of loneliness. Now that I'm here, I didn't really think about the end. Just pain and how to make it stop. But everything is fading now. I welcomed it. It felt fine. Man! How do I get a good end? Man, so, uh, I wonder if there is an ending where you get to be happy. Is there an ending where you're happy? Does that exist? I'm so curious. I'm so curious, but this game is free on Steam, so if you're also curious, find out if you can be, if, if you can, if you can kill the evil Mike! Kill evil Mike! Kill evil Mike!